And as you can see, the 2,000 or so Liverpool fans just over my shoulder making their way out of Anfield after what was an incredible end to that uh, game involving the top two in the Premier League and Liverpool leaving it so late but also gives it that much sweeter conclu a conclusion as far as uh, their supporters are concerned. It's now 66 games unbeaten wow. in the league at Anfield, April 2017. That is a staggering run. John Henderson there interestingly said that was their best performance this season, Michael. Would you agree? Well, in the first half, they played particularly well. Second half, they were probing. Um, Tottenham looked more dangerous on the counter-attack. They went a little bit more direct, which we'll have a look at in, the, in a while. Mm. But no, I thought they played very well. Um, you know, you, you're comparing them probably to the last couple of seasons when virtually every game they were just off the mm. scale mm. Uh, in terms of their, their level of performance. But this season, they're putting a few good performances at home. They've been quite flaky away from home. But tonight, against a very, very good side with a makeshift centre-half pair and against two of the, the country, the world's best, uh, no, they were, they were very good and probably deserved the win. And that's the point here, isn't it? Because, yes, whether jo Jose Mourinho agrees with it or not, they have got a good, fair few players missing. Mm. But then, to, you know, hold off the challenge of Tottenham and to have this, mm. I suppose, the threat of the unbeaten run hanging over them. I think the scary thing for everyone else in the Premier League is they haven't hit top gear yet. Yeah. They've been nowhere near it. Like Michael said, last year they, they put in some wonderful, wonderful performances. Um, they're nowhere near that. They got closer to it today in spells, mm. but um, there's still something missing, but they're getting over the line. They're winning. Today they deserve to win. They were the better football team, without a doubt. Um, but yeah, they, they've had to reshuffle that back, that back unit. Fabinho's doing a great job. He had the youngster Williams you know, alongside him and he, he held his hand, if you like, and coached him and the young kid played ever so well. But um, they're doing it without their top players uh, mm. playing as well. So it's frightening. They can still, they've still got time to hit top gear and if they do, wow, then they could find themselves go away from the rest of the group. They haven't played like that yet. There's still a lot of points to be won and lost for Liverpool, but if they get anywhere near their top form, then it's going to be Liverpool season. In fact, Michael, you were a little bit nervous, weren't you, when you first found out that Rhys Williams will be starting at centre-half? Well, I mean, I've got confidence in the lad, but you're talking about probably the best or one of the best pairings in yeah. world football in Son and, and Kane. And, of course, then you add Fabinho to, to, to that pairing, who is quite naturally a centre midfielder and, and him being played back there has taken something out of the midfield mm. as well. I thought tonight was a game particularly for Thiago if he was fit with that extra body in midfield, that extra spare man. I mean he could have controlled everything about that game tonight but of course another one on the injured list but no it was, it was always going to be the, the key area of the game. Can Liverpool's makeshift centre-halves control what is a brilliant uh, pairing up front for Tottenham and they did in, by and large. Second half couple of the longer balls caught them out, um, but as I say, in the main it was, uh, it was total domination from Liverpool. How good a header was this oh. from Roberto Firmino? Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Mm. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of outswing corners, uh, but that was absolutely put on the, on the tee, really, for Firmino. He gets free, obviously Tottenham do a little bit of uh, Zonal marking in the six-yard box, but they're pretty much man-to-man. -man. And Eric Dyer, there lying on the floor, he thinks he's been blocked, but nothing wrong with that. I, right into the top corner. I think Williams run round the back on his own. Alderweireld actually ends up with two, and he just hesitates, tries to sort of back away a little bit, and that's the split second that, that Firmino gets that space. And what a finish, though, technically. And there's his run <laughs> up to the cop. Two thousand people in there. It doesn't matter if it's full or not. What a time to score, because your opponents basically can't come back at you. You love that celebration. It's a great, but you just, there was a shot just earlier when we saw him score the goal and run the whole length in his face. I mean, the, the joy. Uh, I think the fans being back as well is, is, uh, is part of that. And you see, I don't think I've seen many times someone score at the Anfield Road end and run all the way down to the cop to celebrate. But just because the fans are there, it's, he had to do it. It's better than running to a photographer or someone like that. <laughs> yeah. Let's be fair, 2000. Yeah. In fact, it almost seems to be a recurring theme of late, the fact that the 2000 home supporters have, seen, have made quite a bit of difference in terms of getting the home uh, teams mm. over the line. But also for Roberto Firmino, how much of a sweet moment is that? Because he hasn't been at his most proli and, uh, prolific. And I was going to say, that's not always been his number one game. It's, of course, you know, linking up with the likes of Mane 
and Salah, but goals have been of short supply from him. They have, yeah. I don't totally buy that, you know, Firmino doesn't have to score because he adds so much. I don't quite buy that. If you're playing as a, as that, in that position for Liverpool, you do need to chip in, yeah. no matter how much you, you add to the game. Um, and no question about it, I'd say in, in recent months, he's mm. probably not been at his brilliant best. Um, but he does score big goals, and there's not many bigger than that to, to nick three points. Do you think it's him. really difficult for him though, because he does he does get himself into that midfield area, yeah. mm. and he drops in there, and then and it's Martin and Salah that go in behind. Yeah. Mm. So they end up in areas on a heat map. You'd see them more as centre forwards than for me. The problem I got maybe a little thing that he can get better. That was a set play, but a little bit like Teddy Sheringham used to play. He used to drop in there, but then he would arrive in the box as the second phase, almost like a, a midfield player going yeah. in there. Yeah. Uh, because he drops in so many times, you've got to say he's a midfield player in many ways, like a number 10, but coming back that way to get the ball rather than playing in there. He's got to get himself more in the, in the box and he'll score more goals. But I think he just plays on the peripheral uh, around the penalty area. Yeah. But what a header today. That was a big, big goal. And there's no question he... I mean, his movement, when, as Glenn says, when he drops in there and leaves that space for, for the, uh, the out-to-win runs, yeah. I mean, there's no question that that's just been trademark Liverpool over the years. I would like to see him contribute a few more goals, but, you know, it's there for all to see what he contributes to the team. I was going to say, it hasn't done them much harm, has it, the last couple of years, the way he drops no. into midfield. But what that goal does do, Glenn, is put into stark focus those chances that felt a time you do, it's, uh, it's hard to get the control, but you would have backed Harry Kane to score that. In fact, Glenn, that second chance for Stephen Bergwijn, you said at the time, mm. that is the chance. Yeah. We were saying that they will get a chance, Tottenham, yeah. and suddenly it just appeared, and that was the key moment. And if you're clinical, that's the way, then Jose's tactics are perfect. You know, if he puts this in the back of the net, you're saying, well, they've done it yet again against one of the top teams away, but it's the difference. It's hit the post and come out. Um, but... They're the moments that they're looking for, that, that Son goal, and those moments are, are what's... But they're not going to create many, many chances playing that way. Mm. But when they do, they've got to be clinical. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to have seen him take a tighter touch there. Mm. I don't know what you thought, Glenn. It, when he takes a big touch, the goalkeeper obviously can narrow the angle then. Mm. And he comes out and he stands big. He stand, stood big twice uh, mm. for Bergwijn's chances and really made it difficult. If he takes a shorter touch and then hits it earlier, yeah. he gives himself a much wider area to, yeah. to hit. Yeah. Um, tighter touch and, and hit it earlier, I think he probably opens up the goal a little I bit think more. He wanted, what he wanted to do, really, for me, is that when your ball's on the outside of your body, he yeah. was fighting to get across to, and he's ended up hitting it straight. Yeah. If it's on the outside, it's easy to cut across it and you get and you the could curl. see him running around he's it trying to get around, around it, it yeah. to try to, you get trying to get around it to get that curl but yeah. he actually hit it too straight and and they're the margins in big games like this let's get some post-match reaction from the dugout now because for Tottenham it's their first defeat in 12 in the Premier League here are the thoughts now of the Spurs boss Jose Mourinho chances and yes Spurs <laughs> did have clearer cut chances but as a team as a football team Liverpool were the team that had the ball they were pressing they perhaps didn't have the same one-on-ones with a goalkeeper and I think that's where he's come out he's coming out and saying we're the better team yeah. no they weren't the better team they had the better chances and that's the way he plays and that's the way he sees the game through his eyes we spoke about it before the game who would you prefer you know Klopp is somebody that's built a team an attacking team Michael said it's easier to play a defensive way and then if you've got attacking counter-attacking players as well, that's an easier setup. But um, he's, he's, he's fuming there because he knows they had the chances to actually win the game. But not, you can't say the best team lost. Not as a team, as a football team. Did the best team lose? Oh, don't be no. silly. <laughs> don't be silly. I mean, do you know, the only, I, I like to see Jose Mourinho like this because I haven't seen it for a while. I've felt his star sort of dimmed for, for a couple of seasons now. Uh, I don't know whether it was Manchester United, whatever it was. Um, but he actually, and, and Glenn touched on it before the game, he's got his mojo back now. Yeah. He looks as mm -hmm. if he's, he's saying all the, the nasty things that he said a good few years ago when he was right at the top of his game. He looks like he's revved again now. And, uh, and he's got a team that can back his words up in, in many ways. But still, he's trying to play it all down, isn't it? Uh, isn't he? And, and especially when you know the interviewer was trying to say so he's, he's armed with all the stats. He knew there was only five players that played in that Champions League final, <laughs> and uh, and he's playing it all down. But secretly, I think by the judging by his reaction, secretly he thinks he's got a chance this season. Yeah.
Yeah, and you can tell he's been armed with the stats because that was a sign you got from his pre-match press conference only last week. Mm -hmm. He was talking about the minutes that they've played at a high quality level this season. 670 minutes or thereabouts for Spurs, almost 2,000 for Liverpool. Mm -hmm. He knows what he's doing here, doesn't he? Yeah, of course, and uh, he, we said he's got, he's got his mojo back. He certainly has, and uh, Michael's right. It wouldn't be like this, it wouldn't be frosty like this if he didn't really believe that he was in the hunt and he had a chance of winning this, this title. He's playing it down, of course he'll play it down. He'll play it right the way down until, if he's, if he's leading in April, then he, he can't play it down then. Mm. But at the end of the day, he knows Liverpool have done what they've done over season after season recently. And he's, from his point of view, Spurs were the better team. I'll tell you why he's saying that, because that's how he's planned. Yeah. His plan was to play exactly like that, to counter, and it's all about do you take them chances when you actually get one-on-one -on -one with a goalkeeper. Mm. He's, he's really uh, upset with his team, really. He won't dig out any individuals, but yes, they went a bit direct, but you've got to say they had the best chances. There's no doubt about it. Is this why they were more effective in the second half? Well, they couldn't play through midfield. We've highlighted two midfield players in there who weren't really looking to receive the ball and play through, so they went, they did go more direct, and they put the starting positions of the front players were much higher. I think at half-time he probably said, we're going to go, we're going to hit the front. So you could see that the front players were, were in contact with each other and they were working off each other for, to get the ball in behind. Now this, I don't know whether it was, would have been handball, but that again is a chance. They definitely got in behind that Liverpool defence by hook or by crook. It wasn't free pure football. But he set that plan out, and that's why I think he's thinking we were the better team. Mm. Yeah. No, they weren't the better team. They had the better chances. Tactically, yeah. it was fascinating today. It was. It really and was And that fascinating. was interesting because John Henderson pointed that out, didn't he? He did, and, and it wasn't like it was a surprise to anyone. Everyone knew they were going to sit back and counter. Mm. That's just what they've done against Everton, so they're going to do it against Liverpool, the, mm. the best team in the league at the moment. But the fascinating bit was the, the way they played, the, the set-up to start with, 4-4-2, Sissoko mm. on the right, and then Glenn touched on at half-time how they might change it a little bit. Well, they did change it, they, they stuck to the same formation, yeah. but they changed the way they played. They brought Sissoko back into the middle and then just went long. There was ve Because they weren't getting any success and they were outnumbered in the middle, mm -hmm. why would you play through the middle? Let's bypass it, yeah. win the flick-ons, and, uh, and they caused Liverpool some problems with the flick-ons. I mean, that goalkeeper kick, out of the hands, yeah. and that, that's a throwback to the it 70s was, yeah. or yeah. something. One yeah. kick, flick-on, another flick-on, and, and Bergwijn hits the post. I think if, if Van Dijk was playing, and, and Gomez or, or Matip, that tactic mm. would have been out the window because mm. they would have gobbled all them balls up. But they felt that Fabinho maybe and, and the young Williams, they could get at them in the air second half. I reckon at half time he's gone, we're going direct. Mm. We can't play through, we're going to play with still the four across, the two in midfield. And no disrespect, you can't play balls into them there. And Sissoko's not going to turn on it and play a ball around the corner. That's not his game. He's got other strengths. So they've, they've definitely gone direct there. And they nearly won the game. They created yeah. enough chances from it. But as the best team, no, sorry. <laughs> they weren't, as, as much as I'd love to say they were, they weren't yeah. on the night. No. It was much more of an even contest in the second half. But there's, I think even Jose Mourinho can't deny that Liverpool were the better team in the first 45 minutes in particular. Uh, and a word on your centre-back as well, making his Premier League debut tonight, Rhys Williams. Well, I told you before the game he'd been outstanding. And I'd hoped for the scene tonight and he was, he was outstanding again. I thought he was... One of the best players in the park, won, every, won more majority things in the air, defended. Talk, I can hear him talking all the time for such a young lad, so delighted for him. Um, but not just him, I thought, look, Fabinho next to him, the whole back four and the whole team, to be honest. And you go back to the top, of course, and, and, and what does it mean as well to, to have done it by beating the team that were top and a, a little dent in their record? Well, again, we just want to focus on ourselves. I know we keep saying this and it might get boring, but we do, we focus on ourselves. And yes, um, it might give them another down with it because we've got the three points. Um, but it's more about us and what we do. And we're delighted with the three points. And then our focus has got to be now on the weekend, which comes quick against Palace, who are a very good side, as, as you know, and got some very good results of late. So that'll be a tough test for us.